When we started, we made this for everyone. So that everyone could find anything they need among the millions of bazillions of things in the world. Today, it seems like sometimes it's easy to feel like you need a little help with the stuff just in your own world. Your photos, phone, videos, calendars, messages, friends, trips, reservations, and so on and so on. Wouldn't it be nice if you had some help with all that? Wouldn't it be nice if you had a Google for your world? That's why we're building the Google Assistant. Hi, Amy. How can I help? You just ask it what you need. OK, Google, what do I have to do today? And your assistant understands and helps you out. You can even carry on a conversation with it. How long will it take to get to downtown Chicago from home? Here you go. What restaurants are there? Book a table at Cortino Restaurant. Sure. And the assistant is always there for you. So if you're on the road, you can ask it where to fill up. And if you're at home, you can ask it to play some music. Or if you're in a chat with a friend, it can show you what's playing tonight. It's like your own personal Google. Naturally, anything you share with it is safe and secure. And the more you use your Google Assistant, the more useful it becomes. Remember my bike combo is 326. Got it. And soon, you'll be able to access it from all sorts of places. So it will be everywhere you are. We made this for everyone. And today, we're making this just for you. Hi, how can I help? Meet your Google Assistant. So as you can see, that's our early vision for how we want to build a Google Assistant. We're just getting started, but in many ways, we've been working hard at this problem ever since Google was founded 18 years ago. We have invested in deep areas of computer science. Today, our knowledge graph has over 70 billion facts about people, places, and things, and, and we can answer questions based on that. Our natural language processing is what helps us make Google truly conversational with our users. And we've built state-of-the-art machine translation, image recognition, and voice recognition systems. And each of these areas is being turbocharged by the progress we are seeing with machine learning and AI. A few months ago, we captured the world's attention when DeepMind's AlphaGo won the World Go Championship against LaserDoll, one of the finest players of our generation. It showed the external world the moment for AI has arrived. But for us, the progress has been continuous and, and the strides are huge. In fact, in the three months since AlphaGo played that game, we have had meaningful launches and how machine learning is impacting the products we build. Let me talk about three examples, all of which you know, we have talked about in the past three months since the AlphaGo moment. First, image captioning. Image captioning is how computers try to make sense of images they look at. And you know, we first launched our machine learning system in 2014. It was a state-of-the-art system, and our quality was around just over 89%. Our newer machine learning systems now, the quality is close to 94%. 4% may not sound like much to you, but first, it's really hard to increase quality at these levels because we are trying to approach human, uh, human level accuracy. And second, every single percentage point translates into meaningful difference for our users. So for example, if you take a look at the picture behind me, about two years ago, we used to understand this picture as a train is sitting on the tracks. Now, we understand the colors, so we describe it as a blue and yellow train is traveling down the tracks. Or if you look at this picture, two years ago, we understood as a brown bear is swimming in the water. Now we can count, our computing systems can count, so we understand this is two brown bears sitting on top of rocks. Advances like this is what helps us when you're in Google Photos, find the exact pictures you're looking for and be a better assistant to you. Another example, machine translation. We've been doing machine translation for a while. And historically, our systems are statistics-based, and we translate at a phrase-by-phrase -phrase level. So we translate individual phrases and combine them to form a translation. So if you look at this Chinese to English translation, you can see it makes sense, but it's not quite the way humans would translate it. 
Just recently, we announced our first end-to-end self-learning, deep learning machine translation systems. Rather than working at a phrase level, they take entire sentences and model sentences as outputs. And that's what you see in the middle. And you can see it is approaching human-level translation. You can look at this quantitatively, and you know, we, we have a way to measure these things quantitatively. And if you look at our previous phrase-based system, it was quite far from the human system, and we closed a significant gap with our new machine learning systems. In fact, the progress for Chinese to English is so significant. Last week, we rolled it out in production, and so today, if you pick the Google Translate app, mobile app, and try to translate from Chinese to English, you're, you're using our newer machine learning systems. And the progress has been amazing. We literally translate billions of queries over the coming year. This is what will help us if a user in Indonesia is using, using the Google Assistant, we can find the right answer, even if it doesn't exist in their local language, translate it on the fly and get it to them. Another example, text-to-speech. Text-to-speech is what we call when computers read something aloud back to you. So when you ask Google a question, who is the Prime Minister of Canada, we understand the text and try to make it as natural as possible for you. Justin Trudeau is the Prime Minister of Canada. So this is text-to-speech. The way we do it today, we get a speaker into our recording studios, we record them for thousands of hours, we make them say short phrases, and then combine them to be as natural sounding as possible. Again, deep learning is showing the way. DeepMind just published a paper with a new technology called WaveNet. It's a deep learning model where rather than modeling phrases, they actually model the underlying raw audio waves to generate a much more natural sound. You can again see the WaveNet model is getting much closer to human speech. To me, the reason this gets exciting is, today all we can do is a single voice for the assistant for all context. Doing this is what will enable us to have multiple voices, multiple personalities, get the assistant to differentiate between German and Swiss German, and one day even capture emotions when speaking to you. This is key to our vision for building an individual Google for each user. And more importantly, the assistant will continuously get better as we make progress with machine learning and AI. It is early days, but we are committed to this vision, and we are, working on it, we are going to work on it for a long time. But it's equally important to get the assistant in the hands of our users, and that's what today is about. In fact, we started doing it about two weeks ago with our new messaging app, Google Allo in which users can invoke the Google Assistant in group conversations. And the early reception has been great. They are interacting with it very naturally, asking us questions we expected, like, tell me a joke, but also questions we didn't expect, like, what is the meaning of life? So it's early days, but the Assistant continuously learns from these experiences and keeps getting better. If you remember, our vision for the Google Assistant is to be universal, to be there everywhere the user needs it to be, which is why today we are going to bring the Assistant to two new surfaces, one in the context of the phone, which you always carry with you, and one in the context of your home. 